What's up guys, Nolan here. Been a little while since I posted a video, but I've been waiting for something interesting to post. And this patch is definitely a bit interesting. We have some surprises here for some stuff in Escape from Tarkov. We have the patch notes. This patch is not live as of the post in this video. It will be a, it will be live approximately about 8 a.m. Eastern US time. But when that patch does go live, we're going to be looking at spring. So the snow is going to be gone for the last time. I imagine it's going to rain again. And maybe we have some different colors in the trees or something like that. Something I wasn't expecting is they added the BTR to woods traveling between different stop points. So that BTR on streets is now on woods. It's going to stop at the Scav Bunker, Sunken Village, Old Sawmill, Sawmill, USEC Checkpoint, Emercom Base, Junction. They also added a detailed suspension system to the BTR for more realistic rough terrain movement. Opened the gates at Northern and Southern UN Roblox ex exits, allow the BTR to drive outside the location. These exits are under sniper fire beyond the gates, so we're going to watch out for that do not go through those gates use the exits normally do not walk through those gates they've updated the matching system for ground zero the system divides players into beginners up to level 20 inclusive and experienced players level 21 and above matchmaking for these groups will be separate so if you are 20 and below you will be only matched with players that are 20 and below if you are 21 and above you will only be matched with players that are 21 and above Ground Zero will be available to all players without level restrictions, like it was just mentioning there. For experienced players, there will be a modified version of Ground Zero with increased difficulty of scavs, chance to find rare loot, possibility of an airdrop plane appearing, as well as the option to call in an airdrop with a red flare, possibility of scav boss Kalantai appearing. And that's on Ground Zero. If there is at least one player in the group with a level higher than 20, all players will receive a warning for selecting Ground Zero for experienced players. When playing as a scav, the matching is independent of the player's level. In co-op practice mode, access to ground zero is also independent of the player's level. So the key in mind there is that that was always a thing. You could always scav in to ground zero, no matter what level the PMCs were going to be on that map. So anytime that you scav into ground zero, now it's just going to be, I guess, random like it always has been. But it's, it's now that this is this thing where Colin Ty can spawn and there's also a better chance for loot and airdrops. So just random whether your raid's gonna be good or you're gonna be playing against noobs and it's not that good, just random. Quests first in line, shooting cans, luxurious life, burning rubber, and saving the mole will no longer fail after the player reaches level 20. Those were the things that were, they're cut off. Those are the ground zero specific, you know, tasks. Added ground zero objectives for the following quests. Shooter born in heaven, the guide, peacekeeping mission, the survivalist path, eagle owl, escort, slaughterhouse, and information source. So we're gonna need shooter born kills on ground zero now, as well as survive it with the guide. We've also included ground zero into the loop for daily and weekly tasks. Adjusted the sound system. We've heard this one before. We'll see how this goes. Updated the ambient sound to match the current season in the game. Wind volume now depends on the strength in the raid. Updated the indoor rain ambient. We'll see. Added smoother transitions between day and night ambient. We'll see. Added smoother transition between indoor and outdoor ambient. We'll see. There's <laughs> a bit of a pattern here with this over the last few, you know, several patches or peers. Improved the audibility through door and window openings. Yeah, that's a good. We'll see. Added the external sound suppression while inside the BTR. Haven't spent too much time in the BTR. Definitely could hear stuff. It sounded a lot normal. It sounded like normal, like you weren't even in a BTR, to, at least to me, the few times that I was in it. So maybe they just improved that. Either way, sound stuff, we'll see. UI improvements. Added the damage and penetration stats to the ammo inspector screen. When hovering over the penetration stat, you can see the penetration chance against certain armor classes. If this is what I think this sounds like, they're telling us what the statistics of each round are and the damage of the round by just looking at it. That is something that people have been asking for forever, and it's a thing. We can now see what the actual intended penetration and damage stats of ammunition is. That is huge. Improve the skills menu interface, added descriptions to skill leveling methods. Numerical values of bonuses are now displayed in tents. Added a green skill progress bar displaying how many skill points you have gained during the raid. So that just seems like a, well, better understanding of what you are doing in terms of XP, how much more you need to do or how much more you need to get in order to level up to the next level for that skill. And an interesting thing here, added descriptions to skill leveling methods. I wonder if it's gonna be like everything or what exactly 
exactly that means. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Again, we're not going to be able to play this until around 8 a.m. EST. Added the ability to view a player's profile via their dog tag and on the lobby screen. That's going to be a spicy and you all know why. Added the ability to report a player on the profile page. Fantastic. Also for the same reason. Added a button for the dog tag bonus. But added a button for the dog tag bonuses information in the Hall of Fame zone. Uh, presumably because if you get some cool person's dog tag or a friend's dog tag, it'll show it in a different way or something like that. We'll see. Other changes. Optimize the algorithm of searching for cover for AI. So maybe AI are going to be a bit more sneaky. Going to have to see what's going on with that. Change the lighting inside the ultra mall on interchange added a sound signal before the btr departs from its stopping point improved the hit registration when the player tilts in quick succession okay so this was but uh, here's the thing well we will have to for sure be testing ai this might have been a, a, a they might be brushing over this, or this might actually be pretty significant. They've been messing around with the AI a lot. Again, this is what's weird about these patch notes videos. We're going to have to wait and see. Uh, definitely anybody that's going to be live around 8 a.m. EST, I'd, I'd go over to Twitch. There's going to be lots of people playing. I'm sure all the streamers are going to be playing. Uh, I know Glory plays a lot in the morning. I think Willers plays a lot in the morning. Um, uh, those are usually the people that I watch. Apologies to anybody else. Those are usually who I put on there. Uh, probably going to be some other people that are going to be on. I know Gingy, I think, goes on in the morning sometimes too. Um, change the lighting in inside the ultra mall on interchange that is the entire mall that's the entire thing that i, I the interchange has always been one of my if not my favorite map and it's always a bit difficult when you got somebody that's sitting in a super dark corner i didn't think it was that bad before like this recently I, apparently the, well here's the thing actually change the lighting inside the ultra mall inter ah that could be a good thing or a bad thing actually now that i think about that they could have made it much worse We'll see. I didn't personally, I, I was running a lot to get guns. I got lucky. I was pulling some R sasses uh, out of those cases and whatnot. Uh, early white for me, at least. Uh, I just realized that could be a bad thing. That doesn't necessarily mean they made it easier to see. It could have made, it could mean they made it more difficult. So yeah, again, patch notes video. We're going to have to wait and see. List of fixes. Fixed the, ge bleh, fixed the geometry and settings for locations aimed at more accurate operation of the vaulting and climbing mechanics added the ability to vault from the previously unblocked positions. For example, the windows of the health resort, booyah, even though you kind of could do some of that already. Fix the AI behavior when using station. That's my alarm in case I forgot the thing. Fix the AI behavior when using stationary weapons. Let's see what exactly that's a fix about. Uh, fix the damage calculation. Fixed the damage calculation algorithm for limb penetration. Hopefully the arms. Hopefully, please, the arms, we'll see. Fix the inability to pick up loot at the Terracot Business Center on Streets of Tarkov. Fix the significant FPS drop in offline raids after changing the vaulting over medium obstacles option in the settings to auto. I've never, actually, I don't think I've done a single offline raid this wipe, so I didn't even know that was a thing. Fix the lack of damage registration after ricochet on certain cases. Didn't know about that. Well, I mean, sure, it happened plenty, just didn't really understand it or know about it. Fix the visual effect of painkillers when using NVGs. Didn't notice that visual effect of painkillers. That one's not coming to mind. I don't remember what that one was about. Uh, fix the inability to view a player's profile when using the flea market. Fix the inability to view a player's profile when using the flea market. That might be interesting. You guys all know why. Fix the incorrect damage to the player when walking into a non-moving BTR. Seems like a lot of people are having issues with BTR. Return the display of ricochet chance info for helmets. Fixed the incorrect camera tilt if the player was leaning while aimed shooting. Guys, this has ended up being pretty damn interesting here. We've got some cool changes. We'll see what's going on with the lighting for the interchange. We'll see what's going on with the cover for AI. UI was really good. We actually get to see the damage and pen stats for bullets now. Massive, massive adjustment there. We'll see what's going on with the sound changes. We've been hearing that over the years. We'll see. Like I said, we'll see. The BTR on Woods might end up being massive, especially this point of the wipe where everybody's balling now. Everybody's got money. That PKM, I think it's a PKM in the in the BTR, uh, as long as they didn't activate the cannon yet. Oh, imagine they activated the uh, 30 millimeter cannon and then didn't tell people. Uh, as long as people have got, you know, 70K, as long as it actually, as long as it's a still amount as streets, 70K rolling around, you're going to have to worry about that ui driven fucking vtr shooting that pkm at you so watch out for that um some changes to the ground zero i mean i kind of like the map i don't know if i'm gonna end up going back and playing it let me know what you guys think 
and uh, it's no more snow. I uh, like the snow, but hey, it goes away at different times of the year. Now we see what's going on with spring. I'm assuming the rain's going to come back. But yeah, let me, let me know what you guys think about the BTR. Let me know what you guys think about Ground Zero. And otherwise, that's all for now, guys. Thank you very much for watching. You know the drill. To support what I do, subscribe for more. Check out my other channels for other games right here, which are popping off right now, including Broken Arrow and Star Citizen. Follow me on Twitter for the latest news. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.